Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Tolhurst and welcome to my new YouTubing series, Motormania, talking about all things motoring, here on my YouTube channel. And yes, this new series is it. We're going to be bringing you motoring content from the world of cars and also the world of motor vehicles as well. It honestly is going to be great and I can't wait to share with you what we're going to be talking about in this series. It will also be a podcast um, airing every week as well which will be live on YouTube. But these videos will be um, recorded exclusively for you guys to listen to. Now, the first video on today's series is going to be talking about something um, kind of, you know, something important. Because I want to start off this series by talking about the best cars for new drivers. So, yes, when you enter the motoring world, you will know that there are cars out there that will appeal to you. If you've just passed your driving test, or you want a car for your driving test, these are the great options that I can recommend. Now, I'm not going to go by some of the um, f other companies that do these cars, but I'm just going to give you my opinions on some of the best cars that you can buy for first-time drivers. Obviously, many different motoring channels will say what they think, but I'm going to say what I think. I'm not going to go into deep more. I'm not going to go into details in this video about all the cars. I'm just going to talk about the cars in general, about why I think they're worth it. Now, some of the cars on this list may not be the best cars in the class, but they also might be great options for people who might want different tastes. So I'm going to kick this off. Number one on my list, the first option is going to be city cars. There are a few options for me that stand out in this class. Number one is the Hyundai i10. For me, this car is an absolute must-buy, in my opinion, because the i10 does everything a small car should. For example, the i10 is practical for a, for a city car, and it actually has a decent-sized boot. And actually, to drive, it's one of the best. It's got decent engines, including a decently nippy 1-litre petrol, and also, I think, a 1.2-litre variant as well. The i10 also comes with the newer versions, come with Apple CarPlay, as well so that means you get smartphone connectivity um on on there as standard as well and apple carplay will help enhance um your driving experience by allowing you to have your phone screen on the da on the infotainment system and on the dashboard obviously the older variants of the i10 are the ones i'm more concentrated on because they're cheap to ensure they have the five-year warranty that hind are always known for and are a great option for people looking to buy a budget car another option is going to be one that I think is another good option. This is from Germany, the Volkswagen Up. Um, a European alternative to the Koreans. Yes, the uh, Volkswagen Up is a great option for small car for small car buyers. The only issue with the Up compared to the i10 is it's only available as a four-seater, really. So you're, not, you're going to be struggling with fitting rear passengers in. And they also come in three- and five-door guises. But again, I do think that the Up isn't as practical as the i10 is, but has decent interior space for you as well. And also another option, if you want something for, if you want a city car, but to have a little bit more sportiness, maybe the Renault Twingo might be a good option as well. The Renault Twingo has a little 0.9 litre engine, which is actually mounted in the rear. It's the same platform that a Smart 4.4 uses, except the Renault Twingo is made by Renault, uh, and the Smart is actually made by Mercedes. The Smart actually are owned by Mercedes, and they help make the cars for them. Um, so the Renault Twingo obviously is the main main version of the car. The Twingo is actually quite has a quite a sporty interior. So definitely be advised that legroom might not be as good as the other rivals. Practicality may be limited, but you get a unique driving experience with it being rear, with the with the car having the engine at the back in the boot instead of the front. So very interesting indeed. So there are some small city cars that are options. Super Minis now. There are loads of Super Minis out there that are great options for first-time drivers. For a start, the Dacia Sandero. Now, I know this car isn't the best car out there, but the reason the Dacia Sandero ranks so high on this list for new car drivers is because of how cheap it is. When this car launched many years ago, it was priced at 5995 Yes, less £5,995. It was six thousand sub £6,000. Most Dacias now are a lot more expensive. But it's still cheaper than a lot of their rivals. The Dacia Sandero is a great pick, in my opinion. Number one, 
The Dacia Sandero is extremely cheap. Um, and it's actually pretty stylish inside for what it is. And it feels much bigger inside than some of its rivals as well. It's a very clever little car, clever car actually, the Dacia Sandero. You know, I know the newer versions aren't as cheap, but the older versions are still going for decent money. Um, and they're pretty good as well. The newer versions definitely obviously going to be more well equipped. They're going to have more newer tech inside. But for me, you know, they're just a simple car. You know, they're simple to live with, have decent space inside, and again, are a great option for for new drivers that want a car on a fairly affordable budget, but have a little bit more space than, say, the cars I just mentioned previously in the lower classes. Now, the next option on the list, for me, is an option that I think is worth looking at. Um, and for me, it's simply going to be... Um, well, the next car in the Super Mini class for me is going to be the Renault Clio. Now, I'm not a particularly big fan of the Renault Clio myself. I know a lot of people find the Renault Clio, actually, they really like it. But I would include it in this list because the Renault Clio is actually a very important car for Renault. It's their, their, one of their smallest cars in the, on, in, on the market for them. Obviously, you've got the Twingo as the smallest um, as well. But yes, the Renault uh, Clio has got a variety of different engines as well. It's fairly well um, equipped as well. has decent driving. And again, it's worth looking at having it's worth looking at having if you want a car that's pretty stylish as well it's a stylish car it's easy to drive what more can you ask for really so that's another one also say at ibiza i know they were going to be a little bit more expensive getting one of these but say at ibiza is a great choice it has that kind of ibiza vibe about it you know the vibes that you see in ibiza with the music yeah, we're talking, you know, it, it's, a, it's an interesting car, this. I know it gives you, like, the Craig David TS by Paul Putty vibes when you think of IB, when you think of the music over there. But as a concert, I'm talking about a car here. And the car the car kind of gives you that TS5 vibe a little bit. You know, the radio, the Apple CarPlay, you know, you're in charge of drive. You can charge the music when you're driving around. The IB fit is pretty good, and it's very spacious inside as well. It's one of the super minis. It's actually one of the largest in the class for interior space. So, actually... It's a really good option for practicality. Beats most ha super, some hatchbacks, actually, for practicality, and especially boot space. Very good if you want a small car that has a big boot um, as well. Some hatchbacks actually have smaller boots in it, believe it or not. To drive, yeah, it's not the, it's not the best in the class, but it's a good driver's car. Definitely an improvement on older versions before um, as well. And they're not actually too bad to insure as well. I definitely say that. And another, another option, Super Mini class, is going to be... Um, the Vauxhall Corsa and Volkswagen Polo. Um, I think that the Polo is a good nomination as well. Skoda Fabia as well. Fabia, if you want a similar car that compared to the Polo with decent interior space. Obviously, the Polo, probably slightly better to drive um, than the Fabia is, obviously. But again, another option is the Vauxhall Corsa, as I said. You know, small car, very popular here in the UK. Um, you know, obviously used to be called the Vauxhall Nova years ago. Um and it got rebranded in the 90s to the Corsa. But yeah, no, a, a car that's very popular among young drivers, especially late boys and girls all own this car. Um, yeah, obviously a, lo a load of people get three-door ones. There are some five-door around. I know the newer versions are five-door only. Decent car to drive. Not the most practical. But again, you know, it's a Super Mini. Not the most Super Minis are practical. But has Apple CarPlay inside, and it's a good option. For younger drivers, probably a little bit cheaper on the insurance side of things as well. And I also forgot to mention as well in the super Min in the city car class, the Fiat 500. This car, very iconic, um, obviously dates back to the 1950s. But the newer versions, you know, have that kind of character about them. Um, obviously, the newer ones are built by BMW. Uh, not BMW, no, that's Mini. Sorry. But by the way, the newer versions are built. Um, obviously, here they, they you know they they look different. The front engines. Um, and yes, decent to drive. I'd say maybe a full KA is better to drive than the, than the Fiat 500 is. And both cars are great options. But a Fiat 500 has that personality, um, you know. And it's again another option. And the final car I'm going to talk about before I end this video is going to be another Super Mini. And it is the Mini. Um, 
I said BMW a minute ago. Yes, BMW build the newer minis. In fact, since the 90s, BMW actually built minis. Um, and yes, the Mini the Mini is an iconic car. For me, really, the Mini is so important. Now, in terms of new cars, I would avoid getting the Countryman. Because the Countryman is a lot bigger than the other, mini, the other Minis. For me, a first Mini would be something like either a standard Mini, Mini Cooper, or a Mini Convertible. If you want to go for a bit more of a fashionable vibe, the Convertible Mini... Also known as like a, also known as the the pram among car enthusiasts, um, where the roof kind of falls down. It kind of looks like a little pram, like a buggy. You know, you pull your kid, babies in and stuff, your toddlers in. Um, but the mini, yeah, Mini Cooper D, Mini Cooper, Mini One. Just get a standard mini. You know, they have decent engines. They're not the most insurance on them is questionable, but you know they're they're fun to drive. That's what we that's what young drivers want. They want a car that's fun to drive. Um, you know, not the most practical car, but it's fun to drive, and it's definitely better than some of its rivals. It's definitely better than I think a Fiat 500 to drive. Fiat 500. Full, it's not quite as good as a full Fiesta, which again I'd also recommend as well if you want a first car. Slightly more expensive though on insurance wise compared to a KA, for example. But like I said, you know, the Mini's an iconic car. It's been out since the late 50s. 59 was when it originally launched, and yes. Um, the newer Minis, yeah, they're a lot bigger than the old ones, but still fun to drive. I think that they're great options as well, and also they have a, a, loads of gearbox available, manual, automatic, so you can choose um, whether you want to go for a manual or an automatic. I know, obviously, the car is made by BMW, so have all the BMW iDrive system in place. The gearboxes will all be done by BMW. So, yeah, it's certainly worth investing in if you like small cars. Um, generally, Minis are a great option. But that brings us to the end of the first video of the channel, then... Um, best cars for new drivers. I thought I'd go over a few options. Please comment down below, guys, what you think your um, best um, new cars for new drivers are. Please let me know in the comments, because trust me, I could admit, I probably missed out loads of them. But there are loads of other cars that I'm sure could make this list that I'm doing. So, yeah. That's it for this video. We'll see you again for another video. And also, um, the podcast um, for Motormania will be launching early next week. So stay tuned for all the latest car news on that podcast as well, where I'll be giving you updates on the latest news from the world of motoring. And these videos that I'm going to be doing right now are all going to be info-based videos. So yeah, stay tuned. See you in the next video. Take care.